right now what's going on is that there's an old paradigm which is grounded in stationarity that uh, things are the same now as they've always been and they'll always be the same and climate change does not exist. We're beginning to see chinks in that in that paradigm and a movement to a new paradigm which, which says, you know, climate change is real and you got to do something fundamental about it. Welcome to Vital Voices of the Environment. I'm Rebecca Rubin. I'm here today with Dr. Mark Dunning, president of the American Water Resources Association, or AWRA, a nonprofit professional association dedicated to the advancement of water resources management, research, and education. A distinguished voice in the water resources community, Mark has more than 30 years' experience with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, where he served as chief of future directions in the agency's Civil Works Directorate. Welcome, Mark. Thanks, Rebecca. I'm really glad to be here. Well, tell us about AWRA and, and where you're taking the organization. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, AWRA was founded in 1964, actually, so this is our 50th uh, anniversary year, which is a big deal for us. Uh, it's basically a multi, an organization that, that uh, uh, emphasizes the multidisciplinary uh, nature of water resources. We have uh, engineers, physical scientists, social scientists, biological scientists, legal and policy type folks all in the organization. So using all that brain power, what does AWRA see as the top challenges and uncertainties in water resources for the future? From my standpoint, probably uh, the big three have to do with uh, the, uh, the new normal of uh, extreme events. So it seems that uh, extreme weather events, either too much water or too little water, um, is uh, uh, we're seeing more of that than we have in the past. Uh, sea level rise, of course, is also a very, uh, very critical problem in our vulnerable coastal reaches. And uh, water supply shortages that uh, are becoming more prevalent somewhat associated with uh, climate change uh, impacts. Those are, those are three that I think keep a lot of water managers up at night thinking about. <laughs> and of course they're interconnected. So extreme right. weather, let's start there. What's an example of extreme weather that you think is somehow different from extreme weather patterns of the past? Right now, 11% of the country is in extreme drought. 30% of the country is in moderate to extreme drought. So uh, that's a significant portion of the United States. So a drought on the one hand, but yet you also mentioned sea level rise. So how does that work? Sea levels have already risen about a foot over the last uh, century, and of course they're projected to go much higher. As a result, vulnerable areas are, are increasingly at risk from uh, from just rising water levels and then storms with storm surges like we witnessed with, uh, with Sandy. And for water supply, what kinds of uh, anecdotes or examples would you give there to illustrate the problem? In the West, for example, a lot of the water supply is tied up in snow snowpack. And with, uh, with climate change, uh, the snowpack is not as extensive in many cases, and it melts faster with the uh, with the springs coming earlier. So the water supply tied up in these natural reservoirs is eliminated very fast in, in runoff or there's just not as much to begin with. So how does AWRA address some of these complex challenges and what are its mechanisms and delivery systems? AWRA believes that something called Integrated Water Resources Management, IWRM for short, is the preferred way to address complex water resources issues so that instead of just focusing on one problem at one location in isolation, it focuses at a watershed level on that problem and other problems that may intersect with that problem as well. Look for building coalitions of stakeholders who have an interest in, in the, sweat, the set of problems, the suite of problems, and search for ways to uh, address problems holistically. So you've laid out for us this IWRM approach which sounds eminently reasonable. 
At the same time, you've also identified three major challenges. So I want to ask, what part of the water issue is unsolvable today by any mechanism? The biggest problem we have to deal with is effectively responding to climate change. What we have right now are a bunch of climate deniers, so-called, who, for one reason or another, have a stake in the existing paradigm of, of stationarity. Everything is pretty much the way it has been. Everything's going to stay the same into the future. There's a process that has to take place where little bits and pieces of evidence occur that put chinks in the armor of the existing paradigm. And over time, the old paradigm loses, loses traction and the new paradigm uh, occurs. Uh, in the long run, I think most of our water problems are, are at least addressable in, in, in some fashion. Well, Mark, thank you so much for being here today on Vital Voices of the Environment to talk about those critical issues in water resources.